everybody, this is Denise from Four Square Micro Farm. Today I'm visiting an old friend. Um, I've been working with Chevy Art since the very beginning. It was the very first fiber I worked with, but I never really did a breed study on it. I kind of took it for granted. And I was able to do a little sheep shearing a couple of weeks ago and got back some fleece after the professional shearer came and cleaned up after me. And so I just want to talk a little about Chevy Art. Chevy Art. I, I feel a lot of times that the Hill breeds and the down breeds get a little neglected because they aren't super soft like Merino. Um, but they're, they're excellent breeds for outerwear, for gloves, for mittens, for anything that you want hard wearing. And Cheviot itself is like a natural super wash. Uh, it doesn't really felt. So it's a great thing to use for socks. And so I have my In Sheep's Clothing Filled Guide. And um, this is the book I have. Um, I do like the fleece and fiber, fiber and fleece. I can never remember which one. Source book, um, but that came out after I got this one. And well, this is the one I have. And so it's got a nice picture of Cheviot. You can really see the good crimp here. And Cheviot started in the hills of Scotland. Um, this proper name was North County Cheviot. And then the border or Southern County Cheviot. Now in the Southern County Cheviots um, and border Cheviots are known for their compact body formation, erect ears. They have clean faces and they're white. Also their legs are short um, and they're free of wool. So no wool on their face or on their legs. Uh, the fleece is, makes really nice lofty yarn because it has rectangular staples slightly pointed tips you can see here. And um, one of the things they point out is that since Cheviot is a hill breed, it's not as um, spongy as a true down breed like South Down or um, Clune Forest or Dorset or the other down breeds. And uh, they do, of course, mention that sometimes it's overlooked by hand spinners. But actually, because it is so springy, it really spins up wonderfully. And it's one of those fibers I recommend for beginners. Um, they give some recommendations here. Commercial use, tweeds, blankets, knitwear, hosiery, uh, strong fleece by the carpet industry. And Cheviots are a dual meat breed as well. You get a fleece between four and a half, six and a half pounds. The fiber diameter is 33, well, 28 to 33 microns, staple length three to five inches. And so here is our Chevia with the staple length three to five inches. This right here is from a yearling. So it's softer than this older fleece here. And this right here is a black yearling fleece. And to be honest, I, didn't, I forgot to look it up, whether or not Cheviots can come in black or whether this particular fleece, almost a ram's fleece, was from the, these, this particular herd of sheep was crossed to the Barbados many years ago. So this genetic color may be left from the Barbados. So I have to look it up and see if that isn't. So here we go. This is my fleece and it's been cold soaked. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is what I always do normally, I like to flick things. I did try putting some of it in the hackles, but I'm telling you right now, I really just did not like. You can see as I'm pulling this crimp, how small it was before, as I pull it out. Look at that. That's nice. There's your three to five inch staples. So basically, what I love to do, and you can see all that wonderful dirt leftover vim in that poor thing. I just flick the ends. Okay, so I'm not really carding it, I'm just flicking it, turn it over. Flick the ends. Okay. And we go from this to this.
I really enjoy Cheviot. Uh, I want to thank Tanya Haney from Working GSD, where I get my Cheviot from. And Tanya is the one who got me started with spinning fiber. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for barking, Pepper. Cheviot is done uh, because of my lighting. You really can't quite see how dark this blue is, but um, the variations is, is pretty true to the light for the variations. And uh, usually what I do is I don't unravel my skeins completely all the way when I dye them and it kind of gives it kind of a variegated heather kind of look. That's the quick and dirty way to do it. And um, you can see that this is how we started. And this is how it's come out. Um, the Cheviot takes the dye pretty well. And it's kind of, it's kind of muted compared to, let's, I have an example of Jacob. And this is the Jacob um, that um, is dyed with the same dye right here. And so you can get a kind of comparison of how well it takes up the dye. Uh, now, this is uh, Brilliant Blue, and I'm pretty certain that this <laughs> is also Brilliant Blue, and you can see how this broke up, and this is, oh, if I can remember, it's an Alpaca Angora blend that I made. I have to look at the tag and see, but... Uh, Here's a really good example of what that blue looks like when it's very, dye is very, taken up very darkly. And actually, um, this is a second generation dyeing. Um, I'm trying to remember what I was dyeing before. I was dyeing something blue. It might have been this right here. And this is the dye take up from after I had already dyed once. So that's still pretty good take up. All right, now... I'm going to knit this up. Uh, I just love this skein. Uh, and I'm going to knit it up, and it's going to become, I think, a pair of fingerless gloves. So I'll show you the end product when it's done. Cheviot just makes wonderful outerwear. Um, it also makes really nice socks, too. I think I mentioned that before. So that's what this tupacai is going to become. One of the big problems with me making videos is that, uh, especially when I do the start from finish, I start, I do it in segments, I get through it, and then it takes a while to do the project and I forget to do the last segment. So about two weeks ago, or maybe a week ago or so, I finished the mittens for the Cheviot. And what I did was, uh, gave them to the person who I'd made them for, and it occurred to me that I didn't make the other end of the video. So you can see what the finished product is like. So I had to wait to knit up a second set of mittens, and these ones are supposed to go into the mail today. So it didn't occur to me I'd better go ahead and make the video. I was feeling a little under the weather yesterday. And I started to make the video, and I was like, hmm, I'm not really feeling it. So now I'm back. I'm just weaving in the ends. I'm going to pull that tight. And this uh, is a pair of Mommy and Me mitts. Basically, a pair for a, a, an adult and a matching for a child. And this is going to go into the mail. Okay, so you see me weaving in the ends. And let me put the pair on real quick, the adult one, so you can see um, how well. You know, emerald for the dye is always one of those hard ones to get to take up 
as dark as I like. And Cheviot does not uh, dye as jewel tone like the long wools do. But uh, this came out really, really well. Uh, really, really dark. Really, really dark. And what I did was at the very bottom, you can see the lighter blue, which I really like. And this is the first yarn that you saw at the very beginning. Um, and it was that lighter blue and kind of heathered. I really like that. And so when I spun up the second batch, I used a pink that I had on hand. Uh, let me show you that. Pink. And so the two, the mix were two-toned up until the time I dyed them. And you can see how deep it took the blue dye. I want to say this is brilliant blue. Okay. Now, oh, look how marvelously springy that is. Comfortable. I'd say it fits like a glove, but yeah, of course it is a glove. Nice and resilient. And I actually put these guys into the wash machine and then into the dryer. Um, Cheviot is very felt resistant and very, um, well, pretty much it's natural super wash. As close as you can get to a natural super wash, which is why it's such a great for socks. And from my perspective, it's really good for um, mittens and baby outerwear because you can, for the most part, even if you don't toss it into the dryer like I did, you can toss it into the wash. You're not going to felt it with the agitation. Okay, so that's the end of my Cheviot. And I think for the next one, I'm going to go ahead and do Merino. Everybody does Merino, but I've had like a really hate, hate history with Merino. But I found some excellent Merino that I think um, was going to change my mind. So I'm going to do a short video on Merino. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Um, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, click like because I know Facebook. I'm sorry. I know that the YouTube videos now are doing the ratings based on likings instead of views. So click like uh, if you can. And if you have anything that you want me to, to do a video of uh, or any clarification, just type it in the comment box. And I, as I get more efficient with making these videos, I'll be able to uh, do requests. Thanks a lot, everybody.